Hey everybody, welcome to the last video for Newton's Laws Dynamics. We're going to be doing advanced problems. I hope you guys are ready for this. These are some pretty tough problems. If you're able to follow along, understand this, you should be good to go. But this is really going to challenge your knowledge with dynamics and Newton's Laws. Alright, so let's look at this. A 2 kilogram block rests on top of a larger block of 4 kilograms. The larger block slides without friction on the table. So no friction down here. Okay. But the surface between the two blocks is not frictionless. So there is friction right here. Okay. The coefficient of friction between the two blocks is 0 0.2. A horizontal force F is applied to the four kilogram mass. What is the maximum force that can be applied so that the two kilogram block doesn't slide? All right. The key to doing any of these problems and all these Newton's Laws problems is pretty much being able to draw the free body diagram correctly. So let's see if we can try to draw that, okay? All right, I'm first going to draw the 2 kilogram block because I believe maybe that's easier. So first, let's do a 2 kilogram block. We're going to have force of gravity, which is 20 Newtons. We're going to have force normal, which is also going to be 20 Newtons. There is going to be a force of friction. So remember, there's a force of friction between these two. But the question is, which way is force of friction going to be? Is it going to be to the left or is it going to be to the right? And actually, the force of friction is going to be to the right for this problem. Because friction is what allows this block to move to the right. Without friction, it would just slide off. So friction is what allows it to move to the right. So the force of friction is moving to the right. Now let's look at the four kilogram box. Maybe, okay, I'll put it underneath. Four kilogram box. For the four kilogram box, we have force of gravity, which is equal to four, 40 newtons. But force normal is not going to be equal to 40 newtons. It's going to be, it has more pressure coming from the top of this block so it's going to be 40 plus 20, 60 newtons is holding up this 4 uh, kilogram box. So this force norm is going to be 60 newtons. Luckily, there's no friction down here. So we, there's, no, there's not going to be any friction here. However, there is going to be friction from the top coming from this block. And this might be a little bit confusing, but there's going to be a force of friction coming from this top block that's going the other way. This is Newton's third law of the equal but opposite force of friction. Okay, so as this is getting dragged to the right, it's also dragging this one to the left. Okay, so that's the equal but opposite force of friction coming from the top. All right, so let's see if we can figure this out. First thing we want to know, what is the maximum force that can be applied so that the two kilogram block doesn't slide? So let's first figure out what the maximum force of friction is going to be. We know the coefficient of friction is 0.2, and the normal force is 20. So if we do 20 times 0.2, we get 4 newtons. So this is the maximum force of friction. If there's more than 4 newtons, or uh, what, okay, so that's the force of friction. Let me kind of divide this up a little bit. So that's the only force in the x direction. So let's look at the acceleration, the maximum acceleration. So sum of all force in x equals mass times acceleration. So we have force of friction, which is 4 newtons, is equal to the mass of this one, 2 times acceleration. And then we see the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So what this should tell you is if this box here, this whole system here, if this accelerates more than 2 meters per second squared, what that means is this box is going to start to slide off because there's not enough friction that's going to allow it to get dragged across. So if it, if it accelerates more than 2 meters per second squared, there's not enough friction to hold this up and it'll start to slide off. Knowing that, let's look at this whole system, maybe I'll do that in a different color, and figure out what that force is so that it's going to be the maximum amount of acceleration. So let's look at the whole system here. And let's do the sum of all forces. And the x is equal to mass times acceleration. So let's look at all the forces. We have... Uh, force of friction from the top one going uh, to the right, and then there's going to be a force of friction going to the left. Okay, these are both forces, so they kind of cancel out. And then we have a force applied going to the right. And those are all the forces in the x direction. Now the masses, we have 4 
plus 2. And we, we know we want the maximum acceleration to be 2 meters per second squared, or else it's not going to work. So now let's figure this out. One thing we should know is these are both going to be 4, and they're going to cancel each other out. They're equal but opposite. So the force applied, the maximum could be is 6 times 2, which is going to be 12 newtons. Okay. So if this is pulled with more than 12 newtons, this is going to start to slide off. Okay, so if it's pulled with more than 2 newtons, it's going to start to slide off. So 12 newtons means this whole thing accelerates at 2 meters per second, means the top one is able to stay on uh, and, and might start falling if it's more than that. Okay, it's going to start falling if it's more than that. Okay, part B, was the acceleration 2 kilogram back if a force causes the 4 kilogram box to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared? So now if this bottom box is accelerating by, by 3 meters per second squared, this is going to start to fall off. So this is at the top here, it's going to try to hold on, but it's only going to be accelerating at 2 meters per second squared because that's the max amount of friction where we have. So it's going to start to fall off at 2, uh, it's, it's going to be going 2 meters per second squared, but it's going to start to fall off because it's not as quick as the bottom one, which is 3 meters per second. Hope that made sense. Watch it over. Again, the key thing is knowing how to do the free body diagram. But we're going to be doing a few of these if that didn't make sense. So let's look at this next problem. A 3 kilogram block rests on a 4 kilogram block as shown in the figure. The 3 kilogram block is tied to a wall. If the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.8 between the blocks and the surface and the surface, what horizontal force F must be applied to the uh, 4 kilogram block to make the block move? So again, we want to be drawing a free body diagram. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the 3 kilogram block. Uh, this time, though, there's static friction in between and at the bottom here. So it's a little bit more difficult. So force of gravity, just mass times gravity, 30 newtons. Force normal is going to be uh, opposite of that. So this bottom block is holding it up with 30 newtons of force. And then what we have is we have this, um, there's going to be a force of friction. So as it's getting pulled to the right, friction wants to make it move to the right. Force of friction wants to make it move to the right. However, force of tension is going to be pulling the other way, preventing it from moving. Okay, so key things to know. That's for the three kilogram box. Now let's look at the four kilogram box. So the four kilogram box, um, it's going to, oh, maybe I should draw this a little bit bigger. It's going to have a good amount of forces on it. Uh, let me try to draw this as best I can. So what we're going to have, we're going to have a force of gravity, which is equal to 40 newtons. And I should also say this 3 kilogram block is pushing down on it. So I'm going to call that the force normal of the 3 kilogram block pushing down on it with 30 newtons. Okay. Uh, I forgot to kind of add that in the last one, but just know that happens. And then there's going to be a force normal going up. So the bottom of this is holding both of this up with 70 newtons. Okay. And now what we see is there's going to be a force of friction from in between these two boxes, equal and opposite going this way, force of friction. This is equal to an opposite of this bottom of the top one here. But there's also another force of friction from the bottom surface over here. Okay, so know that there's two force of friction kind of preventing it from moving. And then it's also getting force applied right here. Okay, so we have to start to try to figure all this out. Uh, so force of friction, we know is going to be, for this one, is just going to be 30 times the coefficient of friction, which they give us, which is 0 0.8. So this is going to be equal to 24 newtons. And then we know the force of tension is going to be holding it back with 40, uh, 24 newtons. So we know uh, for the 4 kilogram block, this is going to be equal and opposite. So this one is also going to be 24 newtons, this force of friction. But let's figure out what this force of friction down here is. The normal force of the ground is going to be 70 and then times 0.8, times 0.8. And we get 56 newtons. Okay. So I know there's a lot going on. And that's why I said the key is being able to draw the free body diagram correctly. So now, let's look at what this force applied is uh, so that it could start to move. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at this bottom free body diagram to figure this out. 
Okay, I guess you could look at the whole system, but it's not really going to matter. So let's look at the bottom free uh, free body diagram, and we're going to do sum of all forces, and x is equal to mass times acceleration x. So we have force applied minus force of friction, and there's also another friction is equal to the mass of this four kilogram block times acceleration. So force applied, we don't know. Force of friction is 24 coming from the top and 56 coming from the bottom. The mass is 4 and um, the acceleration, okay, so it's just going to start to accelerate. Uh, so we're just going to say acceleration is just 0. So it's, it's just going to start to move. So we're looking for the minimum. So 24 plus 56 and we get 80 newtons. Okay. I hope that made sense. I know it was pretty confusing. We're going to do one more like this. So hopefully it's making more sense, but watch it again if it's not. Last one. Looking at the figure below, what is the friction force on the top block if the coefficient of friction is 0 0.8 between the boxes and the surface below? So similar to the last question, there's friction between the boxes and also at the very bottom. Again, same thing. We want to start with a free body diagram. So, 4 kilograms. Let's draw that free body diagram. We have force of gravity straight down. That's going to be 40. We have force normal. That's the 10 kilogram block pushing up on it, which is going to be 40 newtons. Then, we're going to have force of friction. So, as it's getting dragged to the right, there's going to be a force of friction. Okay, so there's going to be a force of friction, and we don't actually know exactly what that is. Okay, so there's going to be a force of friction dragging it to the right. We're not just going to do 40 times 0.8 because that would give us the maximum force of friction. Okay, that will give us the maximum force of friction, and we don't know if we're going to be using the maximum force of friction yet. So now let's look at the 10 kilogram block. Okay, so if we're looking at the 10 kilogram block, we have a few things force of gravity which is just 100 newtons. The force that this block is pushing down on that block, which is going to be 40 newtons. And then the normal force, which is going to be the opposite of these two, uh, which is 140 newtons, or I should say canceling out with those two. And then there's going to be a force applied, which is equal to 150. And then there's going to be a force of friction coming from the top. Okay, coming from the top. And then there's going to be a force of friction coming from the bottom. Okay. Uh, what we know is we can find out what this maximum force of friction is for the bottom one because we know it's going to be moving to the right. So let's figure out what this force of friction is. So we're going to do 140 times 0.8, and this gives us 112 newtons. Now, to figure all this out, we're going to try to find how fast this thing accelerates. So we're going to, to find the acceleration, we're going to look at the whole system. Whoops. Wow. The whole system. There, yeah, whole system. So let's see this. Sum of all forces in the x equals mass times acceleration x. And let's look at everything. Let's look at the top and the bottom. So at the top, we have force of friction going to the right. At the bottom, we have one force of friction going to the left. And then another force of friction going to the left. And then we have a force applied going to the right. And this is going to be equal to both the masses, m1 plus m2, times acceleration. So let's figure this out. What we should know is this force of friction and this force of friction cancels out. So we could just cancel that out. This force of friction is negative 112. Force applied is 150. Mass 1 is going to be 4 plus mass 2, which is 10. And now we can find acceleration. 150 minus 112 divided by, whoops, sorry, 150 minus 112, divided by 14 gives us 2.71 meters per second squared. Let me just see if I did that correctly. 150 minus 112 divided by 14, 2.71. Okay, good. So now, now that we found the acceleration, we can find how much friction we need at the top so that this goes along with it. Okay, so let's figure that out. What I'm going to do is, I guess I'll use a different color again. Uh, we're going to just look at this free body diagram to figure out how much friction is needed. So, so I'm going to do sum of all forces in the x equals mass times acceleration. There's only one force in the x. That's the force of friction. And that's going to be equal to the mass, uh, which of that top block is 4. And acceleration is 2.71.
So remember, the whole system is going to be accelerating at 2.71 meters per second. So in order for force of friction to help go with the box at the bottom, we're going to be doing that. 4 times 2.71, which gives us 10.84 newtons. Okay? And just know that if it was more than 10.84 newtons, if we did 40 times 0.8, what does that give us? 40 times 0.8. That would give us 32 newtons. And if this was 32 newtons, that means this top block would be accelerating more than this bottom block, which we know friction can't do that. And that's why we're not using the maximum friction to figure this out. We're just using, we're just first trying to find out how much acceleration are they both going in and then how much friction is necessary for that acceleration. I hope that made sense. I know this was really difficult, but problems like this do show up on the AP exam, and I did want to show uh, show these kind of problems. Thank you guys for watching, and please watch it again if uh, you were confused by these questions.